Welcome back to The Conversation, where I speak with Carol Narcis, social policy analyst and public affairs commentator. So just before the break, um, mm. we, we said that we needed to be more unforgiving. Yes, um, we so need to have zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. So pretty much it sounds like we need to manage our affairs in the same way that we would manage our business. Yes. Um, so you are unpacking. You you started looking at the whole and idea I, I, of I'm, recall. Yeah, I'm Go glad on. you made the, the 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 analogy between the nation as a business to be compared with a business. Now, if you had a little grocery shop that you operated, and you had to do other things in order to make ends meet, right? So you needed someone to run the sh the grocery shop for you. You gonna give them your grocery shop and then walk away and don't care what they do with it? You are not going to walk away and say, oh yes, carry right along. We don't really want to even know how you are handling the books. <laughs> we, we don't even want to know if it's your friend them you're buying things from with my money. We don't really want to know if, uh, you, oh, you don't have any accounts to show me. Oh, that's all right. No, so, we would not tolerate it. So when, when we argue then that, that Jamaica is, is being run like a patty shop, um, no, man, what, what we exactly disrespect we patty shops. <laughs> okay. We are disrespecting patty shops. You need only ask the proprietors of the two big patty shops that we have <laughs> to, know, so. to know that, look, the nation is the largest business, right? The budget of the nation is the largest of all budgets. The responsibilities of those who we entrust with the privilege of serving us, because that's really how we have to begin to understand what we're doing when we put people in, in positions of power. We are entrusting them with the privilege of serving us. But they are not there as kings, queens, overlords. They are, we are not the plebs that the, we, we, we can be told, don't ask us any questions. We don't owe you any explanations. That's not acceptable. But now when we look at when we look at the voter turnout, for example, now we see 29.7. So obviously it's trending down. Um, there's a statement that, that was made before either of us um, came to be that those who are too smart to vote are governed by fools. Now, could it be that we are we're we're too ignorant or we're not we're not okay enough of, of what are required of what are the things that are required of our leaders so we don't know how to hold them accountable? Could that be it? Our people are, are extremely intelligent people. You talk to any Jamaican out there wiping a windshield or selling in the market or collecting your solid waste or a doctor in a hospital or whatever. You can have conversation about world affairs with any of those people, okay? So our people are a thinking people, we are an intelligent people. What is the challenge is that our education, as you and I were talking about before we came on air, we have a colonial education that persists, that um, does not uh, inculcate consciously in our people and in fact stifles questioning problem solving, challenging of authority in a way that is respectful, but challenge mm -hmm. nonetheless. Um, we, our system of education discourages thinking. It encourages regurgitation, right? It discourages thinking. It discourages our children from questioning. It discourages us from um, experimenting and so on. So, the practice, the behavior of questioning, holding to account, uh, etc., is not sufficiently developed, right? The majority of our people, remember this is a country where power is accorded based on issues of race and color mm -hmm. and class, mm -hmm. gender, um, urban and rural, language, so if you don't speak English, you are, you are not accorded the same respect as, as those who do speak English, right? So all of those things are factors that 
make the difference between your access to power, your voice, and the extent to which people listen to you, right? It's not till our people block road and carry on bad before people listen. And those people who are blocking roads and carrying on bad, you best believe they have tried to talk to their MP, they have tried to talk to their councillor, they have written to every known agency that's supposed to serve their needs, and nothing. So, so, so then so, the low voter vote turnout that we have then, you're saying that this is a teachable moment for both political parties? It, it has been, but they're not learning. <laughs> The low turnout, voter turnout has been persisting. You and I have said that, right? It has been getting lower and lower. When you don't really care how you get to power as long as you get there, then low tur voter turnouts don't seize you with any sense of urgency. When you don't care whether the majority of people have, have given you the mandate as long as you have the position and can do what you will with it, you don't really care if it's two people who vote, okay? Because you're not in the business of developing, um, you know, you're not in the business of national development. You're in the business of, of power and trading that power for your own benefit and for the benefit of your friends and family. So, so with your background as a um, policy analyst and, and, and so on, how can we change that? How can, how can the country begin to shape itself, to change that, to ensure that we don't see a repeat of this? Well, even if it's not in this upcoming um, general election, but further on, mm -hmm. how do we change that? Well, there's several things we have to do. One is that our education system has to serve our people better and has to understand that it is the, it is the most important thing that equips our people with the tools and the capacities to, um, to make decisions, um, make demands, be aware, have access to information, um, and so on and so forth. So that's one, education. But education is not just a function of what takes place in our schools. So you and I, and those who are listening, we have a responsibility to engage with all our people at whatever walk of life they are, to say, do you know that you matter and that you are important and that you deserve good, good governance? Do you know that? Do you know that you have rights that are being abridged? Do you know what they are? Let me tell you what they are, and you must start insisting that people don't disrespect you, and don't disrespect your children, and don't disrespect your community. We have to start engaging with our people like that, in the way that, say, a Walter Rodney did, right? Yes. A scholar activist, you mentioned him earlier before we came on air. There, the, a scholar activist who understands that his role as an academic is is, gains value to the extent that he's able to raise the standard of our people, right? So it needs more of us to be committed to that kind of engaging but, but with, our, no with our people. But isn't that the role of civil society, no? Then you are not a civil mm -hmm. society, you know. The young, beautiful young people on camera here are, are members. Civil society is all of us who are not members of the state, right? So that's the rest of the population. Yeah. And we all have the capacity and the duty, the each one teach one, the each one help to empower one is, is an absolute necessity. We also need to get serious about constitutional reform. Um, everyone knows that we're in another process of constitutional reform. Um, a lot of focus is being placed on making us a republic. But making us a republic where the prime minister and our president only replaces the monarch, mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in, then that's not going to take us but, far. But, so but do you so think we need comprehensive reform. Do, do you reform. think the government is doing um, a sufficiently adequate job at, at informing us as to the roles and responsibilities of, one, the Constitutional Reform Committee, and two, a new constitution, how will it empower us as a nation? Do no. You think? And the process is, is woefully inadequate, and but deliberately so, you know, because there is no real seriousness to have constitutional reform that empowers the citizenry. That's not the mission. So they the don't role, understand you know? that what, as their assignment. What would you say the mission is then? <laughs> if that's not the mission, what would the you mission say The mission is, is, in my view, 
the mission is to continue to create the governance structures that concentrate power into the hands of a few. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I, I think that's what is understood. So, so this is a facade or a smokescreen then? Well, it's, it's an opportunity. We have an opportunity because having, ha, it, it having been embarked upon this business of constitutional reform, whatever the motivations of those who have taken us on this once again road of constitutional reform, whatever their motivations might be, we must undermine those motivations and we must seize that the moment and do the educating in our citizens associations and our youth clubs and our, any group that we belong to. Every pastor that is listening to this discussion should be using their pulpit to help their congregation to understand the opportunity that is presented to us of constitutional reform and to gather their congregation into a discussion of the kind of constitution that will give power to the people um, and discuss what kinds of structures will allow that power to, to have expression. And then as pastors, as community leaders, as business interests, we present the, these, these demands to the people who are managing the process of constitutional reform. So do you think that there will be a distinct disadvantage for those who, let's say that we continue it, uh, we, we allow it to progress as it is progressing? Then we, um, should, be, we should not complain. Should if not we complain. allow it, then, you know, let's not well, complain. No, why I ask, you know, because I'm, I'm trying to tie that into yes. the low voter turnout, the historically low voter turnouts, and, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much a case whereby persons feel, or persons seem to indicate that they feel as if it doesn't make a difference if we vote, so let's not vote. But that's people's lived experience, you know, mm -hmm. it's not their imagination. People's lived experience is that it has not made a difference who they put there. They still don't see the, the, the representative. They still don't get the services, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What they now must be aware of, and I've been, every chance I get talking about this, we've had a local, gov if you're talking about local government, we've had a local government reform process now for eons. That process has resulted in three very important pieces of legislation having been passed. And there is one that I want everybody who is watching this to download. It is the 2016 Local Governance Act. The 2016 Local Governance Act says that every council, every municipality is supposed to have an advisory group made up of civil society. Yes. It says every council is supposed to have a local public accounts committee chaired by a citizen, not a councillor, and made up of citizens' groups, community development councils, etc. And that local public accounts committee must have oversight of the budget, the money, how it's going, how it's spent. So, so the structure uh, seems to be there, now, but it's the lack says, of something it else. It says that the councils are supposed mm -hmm. to report. Oh. at least once a year so, so to it's constituents. A, it's, it's a process of accountability, monitoring, and evaluation then? Yes, and it is established now in law. So it's from 2016, you know, this is 2024. <laughs> Did anybody tell us? No. Did anybody do any public education about the law? No. But that's not accidental, right? We now must inform ourselves about what that law says and the other two pieces of legislation and we must insist that they be implemented and, and followed. Oh. All right, so we just want to take this opportunity to thank you for having sat with me on the conversation. It's been a pleasure. I'm looking forward to talking to you again. We go to our second break. Um, continue to stay with us. You're watching The Conversation. I'm Kwame Thomas and we'll be right back.
Welcome back to the conversation. We have on set for this aspect of the discussion, Clyde Williams, political commentator and social commentator as well, as well as former mayor Keith Hines of the Portmore Municipality. How are you, sir? Good bad at all, you know, sir. Clyde? Blessed how love. How goes it? Yes. So, what I want to get from, from both of you now are your assessments of the recently concluded local government elections. I'm not sure who wants to go first. I'm going to yield to the practitioner. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I, I am still trying to, to, to find what the conclusions are because you hear one minute, one minute. But suffice it to say, I understand that the Labour Party has won, although by a very slim margin. Um, one of the things that interests me in this particular part of the election is the KCSMC. Um, if it is that, as I hear it, there's a tie, or I'm still understanding that it might have gone one up. That's 2020 now. It's 2020. It's 2020. 21. Well, I guess... I, I, was, is, I was in the midst of the... That, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm still not clear yes. on, but I might to suffice it to say, mm -hmm. if it is 2020, there's nothing to rejoice about becoming a mayor. Because from my own experience, with a tie, a mayor doesn't have a deciding vote. And if the mayor doesn't have a deciding vote, you really need to have that extra vote to break any scenario that you might have. So one of the things that we want to do is to engage and to teach Jamaican people exactly how a council works. Um, the man at the top, which is the mayor, usually gets a spotlight. However, I just guide you that it is not that man is the decision maker in council. The decision maker in council are his committees so the various committees will sit at various times and they will come up with decisions and say, well, we know Mr. <coughs> Clyde Williams has a container at his yard based on reports we have gotten. And so we're now going to say at this committee level that the enforcement team should go out and remove. However, they have to give the mayor the paper to sign. No, his job is to sign it. He cannot say because, well, Mr. Clyde might be a labor right that he's not going to sign it. That's the theory. Yeah, yeah right. That's, That's the theory. Right? That's the theory. But yes, no, because but Warmington, what is Warmington is his name, not Warmington. Yeah. I always mix up those two men, yeah. the man from St. Catherine, where people are calling for the Prime Minister to mm. remove him from the cabinet. What's his Mr. Name? Warmington. Oh, it's Everyone, Warmington. That's, that's Warmington. Sorry, term, sorry. Warmington has just exposed it all for everybody to see. I like people who, I'm not agreeing with what he said, but I'm saying I like people to say what they mean and mean what they say. Listen to me, is 30% turnout in the election, just about 30% turnout. Yeah, 29.7 to be okay. specific. But we're going to round it off Yes. up to 30. It's the lowest turnout that I'm seeing on record, uh, and I, I'm going back to 1986. Well, last, last, the last look was 30. Was, was it wasn't 29 points, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, rounding it up. That's correct, but I'm just seeing so that mm -hmm. we're at that point. So wholeness has had two local government elections where the turnout have been the lowest mm -hmm. in the history, well, certainly up to 1986, wholeness, in one. You don't get the sense that our politicians are saying that the system, the legitimacy of the system is under threat, mm -hmm. which is obvious. Because remember, you're building the thing on democracy. You're building the thing on people participation. And if you are going to govern with like 1.5 person, three out of 20 supporting you, where is your mandate? Where is your legitimacy? So you have a tug of war and two by one side and eight by the other side. Where is your legitimacy? So the entire political uh, project in Jamaica now is on the legitimacy siege. But to, to, to the Prime Minister's credit, I guess, um, we have seen a consistent trend downwards yes. in terms of voter turnout. Well, that's so, not to his credit, so, is well, it? It can't be to no, his credit. No, because, so, <laughs> so is it that is it that democracy has always been under threat? What what might be the cause well, of no, this? I wouldn't, well, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to allow you. No, that's not true. That's mm -hmm. not, that wouldn't be factually accurate. In the 1990s, you're talking 60 point so percent turnout. Yes. Um, you're talking up to 50 odd percent turnout and, in you know in elections, general elections. I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. The last general election, as you know, is 37 point something, and the one before was under 50 percent. So I'm just saying right. that I wouldn't agree it's been always like that, but right now. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I, I get what Clyde is saying, mm -hmm. right? 
And part of the reasoning, as I see it, is that we have generation gaps, the changes in generation. The persons that of my ilk and Clyde's ilk used to, with a rain, sunshine, would go out. Right now, Prime Minister Wilness would have been a Prime Minister who was probably given the most young persons job opportunities. No, man. No, I don't um, know. Well, you can speak to now. I'm in, speaking in, 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 in terms of numbers, no, in terms of numbers, yeah, in terms of quality. Yeah, yeah, no, job no, in terms of the BPOs the country, and so on. And in, the, in the country? Yes. A the lot Prime of, Minister's job and, is not to create job opportunities. No, and it's listen, not so. That's not factually well, correct. Hold on a second. Let don't me politicize just, the let discussion. Me, let, me, let me put don't it Don't bring it into party level. In terms of number of jobs and quality of jobs. Don't even bother go there, man. Can I say something? Youths. It's, I could easily argue from aren't a point. We reviewing the, aren't we reviewing the, the legitimacy and the system yeah. given the election results? We're not talking economics yeah. here. We're talking about the fact that we just had a parish council election, 29 point something percent, and the question is, what should we make of it? But, well, more, more clearly than um, um, former mayor, we are looking at the fact that in Junction, for example, hundreds of persons um, were supporting our were lined up behind the Prime Minister. Where are they now? Why is it that we why is it that it's looking this way as opposed to Um if you want my honest opinion, if Clyde will allow me, all right. All right. Um I'm a politician. Although I've stepped aside from politics, but I've been in politics so many years. My thing is while you grow the macroeconomy. You have to deal with the microeconomy. Answer the question, man. And and don't so run those political if the, lines. If the microeconomy is not moving alongside with the macro, this is what you're going to get. Because you need to, people at the bottom need to feel the hand so of I'm the asking, government. So, yes. so can I ask you something directly? Uh, no, 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 you know, I no, want to no, 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 I want to ask yes. you because it there's no, no, that's not what you said. Hold on, is it that, hold on is one it second. that the Prime Minister no. and his policies have marginalized no. the base? No, that's not a question to be answered yet. Hold on one second. Continue, answering with, answering, your, continue right? with your point. So what I'm saying is simple. If we were to look, if you want to energize the people to come out and vote, they need to see what exactly they're voting. And it's a local election. But they were there behind <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> mm -hmm. I am no, I might take leaks from some parts, but I'm just simply saying, while you're building the nice roads, while you're building the <laughs> economy. You're in the party and no, I'm afraid. No, hold on, I'm not afraid in the bedroom. I don't, <laughs> Pete, I don't, no, 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 it is simple. You can build all the macroeconomy. Jamaica is two or three generations <laughs> away from understanding what a macro situation is vis-a-vis -a, -vis a micro situation. We are two generations away don't, from that. Don't disrespect um, the people. No, listen. Don't, don't the young disrespect persons, the, the young people persons, about two generations away from understanding uh, the distinction right. between no GDP so and whether them you, can go a shop or afford no salt. No right. you, you'll, have ample time. you'll have ample time. Right. Right. Well, we no, definitely well, want to hear. No, I'm going to tell you. As obviously, no, he's nicely hyped up. And listen, it's an he is an, part he's of conversation. A, he's an analyst. He's not a practitioner. Happy to be so, right. So the experiences, so the experiences different. are different. Go on. And so I would say still to only you, thirty percent support. I would you know. say to you, it doesn't matter whether it's thirty percent or twenty percent. The the Jamaica Labour Party has won the elections. No. What that you mean? Being said, what you that mean? being said, that being said, I go back. I go back to my what? original point. What needs to happen now, mm -hmm. and what the people need to see from the government if we're going to move the voter apathy forward. Yes. We need to understand that people don't vote necessarily on issues of <laughs> macro things. What they vote on is, I, I mean, let me tell you, my own experience, just before the election, I was driving out in, um, in St. Anne. Yeah. And I fell in a patrol. <laughs> Yeah. And when I fell in the pothole, I said, wow. I'm sorry, Keith. And I'm seeing, no, when you see, you say, I'm an independent mind, mm -hmm. so I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I will yeah. tell you that I'm an independent liberal mind. <laughs> and yeah. I'm saying to myself, but I don't see any potholes being fixed. 
Maybe the Prime Minister looked at it and said, he has done enough <laughs> to, no, for, people, for, to for people to, <laughs> so, to understand so, what he has so, done. So, mm. Come on, uh, come on, one Clyde. We need to, we no, need to hear. Yeah. No, Clyde is operating as a PMP undercover, and that's just simply. Don't get... No, man, no. Anyway, so we have to understand You that. know this, I'm not... Don't, if you be... If you anyway, be listen, key, that, key. I, I need to try to no. keep you quiet. That's no, 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 don't, no. Don't, Anyway, I, listen, listen to me. I, no, no, seriously. So no, hang on, hang on. Mm. Hang on. I take these things very seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm not here representing anybody else but Clyde well, Williams. So, right. so don't, don't, right. don't, don't. Well, my apologies, I, you, sir. You saw how long I've allowed us to speak. My I was interdicted every now and again. Don't do those things on the program. All right. My so what, what he's saying, that the views expressed here are clearly he's his. And, I'm not, but right. everybody yeah. knows this. The PMP is also aware of so, this. So many times have you heard them in public giving me lashes for what I have to say. So what I'm saying, my no, views, Keith, so, what, so what I'm saying, no, out of order. Right, right, that I'm saying, no, my good legal friend, is that we need to understand who is the we jamaican population okay right that there's a process mm -hmm. and i keep saying that add persons that are now in opposition at the having their long reign that they had given <laughs> the new prime minister well, on a second just allow me please i'm yeah. so sorry yeah. to, and, and he's going back to the period but, 1989 but, I'm going to waste no. some time with that. I'm no, not going to sit here with this. No, 19, he's going back to the period 1989 to mm -hmm. something. Prior to, prior to, prior to when Portia and Peter stabled our, mic, our macroeconomic situation, where they then, mm -hmm. rightfully so, are building on that. So let's not get back into that kind of nonsense All politics. Right, so so we, understand what, we understand where you're going. Wasting no? time. So, I'll, so. Hello, hello Mazva, I'll try to tell you. All the wonderful things right. that he knows. Con yeah. Continue. All right, so here's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the elections, the yeah. local government elections. I like to use numbers. So at this point in time, the JLP, on what we know, they have had seven parish municipal corporations under their belt. That's what we know now. Mm -hmm. Keith just said it. Yes. The, JL the PNP, PNP has six. Yeah plus the municipal council that he was mayor of. Mm -hmm. So in terms of municipal authorities, as in corporations plus council, it's a 7-7. Seven -seven. Yeah. Right? What does that mean for a democracy? And, well, well, can I tell this? Unlike Keith, who said, boy, if it's too close and not like that. No, I want it close in there. You know why? Because when you get closeness like that, you get compromises. Otherwise, we can't go forward. So you're saying that that's ripe for accountability? Well, it must be because the check and balance is right on the razor edge. Remember that the last council was the same thing in the Labour Party in Kingston. Case, Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, they control it. Remember yeah. that? And the next election, albeit eight years later. Now, this has happened before, so it's not just the Labour rights do it. Okay. There was a 1990 to 90, 98 during PJ when there were no elections. It's politicians, them name, brother. <laughs> well, I'm a labor writer, PMP. Yeah, the same. <laughs> but they, they exhibit the same things in terms mm -hmm. of fundamentally their approach to power and politics in the country. People are pawns. So that's why man begs on, and you hear people talking about by election. And they spend a lot of money wrapped up in shirts and all kinds of other disguises. Give us somebody a home, and then when the later session I'll come vote for them begs. <laughs> but me not understand. <laughs> I thought you were. The, I'm just saying our political class through their conduct and the practice of politics, have driven people away from involvement in the process. From a high of 60%, 58, 59% in the 1980s and 1990s, to a low, I talk in general elections, to a low of 30-odd percent below 50%, driven, driving people away. And until, until Jamaicans decide that we're not putting up with this nonsense anymore, you know, when we say them I fix the road, them, for about eight years, PMP do it to call Westmoreland near no road. And every year, Westmoreland give them vote and near no road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you say, they want to give Westmoreland a road. I just saw the thing work. I see them the night before election, have a um, big spotlight I fix some patrol and um, riverbed road. In a red pond, when we have to drive through to get to them enough times, that option may have. The night before election. All right, so we go, to, we go to a quick break. When we come back, when we come back on the conversation, we'll look at how do we fix those issues that yes. both of you have mentioned. Um, continue to stay with us. You're watching the conversation.
Welcome back to the conversation. Just before the break, we started looking at, our, well, we're about to ease into how we could fix the issues that we, we just mentioned. Yeah. But before that, what I wanted to find out, um, either of you gentlemen, do you think, let me start with you first, um, former mayor, do you think that the, it was a case whereby Mark Golden and his time come message was grossly underestimated um, by Andrew Honis and, and, and the Jamaica Labour Party? I would say so, yes. And he had a lot of time on the road, but guess what? If you can <laughs> work the system, I'm sure you will get the results. Right? So nobody can discount what his message was going forward and saying, well, time come, and he was going out there and pressing that message forward, and he got the rewards for it. Right? So you'd be nonsensical if you say that wasn't a, a good message. Because as I say in politics, you know, it is the person who get out there and put his message forward first. That is the more believable candidate. I would put it even further sometime, the man who tell the first lie. People would believe him. Well, you call the river bottom. Care, right? Careful so, now. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just these are facts mm -hmm. of life. I mean, I, I'm not into the Keith theatrics. Keith is from the river bottom. And, so, and so, so, so the man fish and boil pan in if you believe better, him. Oh, you mean, then if kids so, come and say fish have boiled pan in your eyes. So, 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 for question to you yes. now, um, so we're looking at, we're looking at, we're looking at um, Prime Minister Honis' message, building, building lives, building country, building right. better communities and right. that, and then we want to see how did that stand up against the time come message because the Prime Minister described right. that as being empty. So right. to speak, it was empty. Um, it, it lacked depth. It wasn't, it wasn't given any direction. Do you think well, he also? Well, the opposition is not in government. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, guys. You can only have one government at a time. You can't have the yeah, opposition framing policy and making programs so the country would be chaotic. So, so when Keith said Mark was on the road for three years, but that yeah. government no for, no for years. <laughs> so I'm just saying, what do you mean when he says he's on the road for three years? You don't want the opposition to do the work? That's the job of the opposition, to be on the road. To, to bring the different perspectives in the community. I love politics. You know what I love about politics? I love about constitution and law. It says that we're all entitled to have political opinions. So I never, ever start by bashing somebody's political opinion. Because if you do that, it means that you're unconstitutional in relation to an acknowledgement that somebody can have a different political opinion to yours. Oh. Right? So, of course, the opposition must be on the road. And I'm happy that... Keith, in his analysis, identify the single most important factor in the local government election, the micro experience of residents in community. The micro experience. The roads, lack of the roads, lack. Basically, I got you some community, only, only in uptown, the road them nice and smooth. No other place in no the road in no the dead there be a riverbed and the people so, are and it's not just the JLP. It is well, the it is the marginalization of both parties of local communities over the last forty so, years. So so on, on Monday night the Prime Minister made a declaration mm. at, at Belmont Road headquarters that the Jamaica Labour Party has gotten the message. Yes. Um, so do you think that there are going to be changes I'll going ask forward? That. No, no, man, I'll ask you first. I'll ask you I first. Keith to Keith will, have first that, <laughs> Keith will have that question no, to answer. No, I want to yield to Keith. So, please. <laughs> Go on, man. No. So, Let me yield to Keith. Mm -hmm. You want to yield to me? Yes, Keith. Oh, mm -hmm. but the Prime Minister himself has said that he has got the message. And I'm certain that the message not only needs to be gotten, but action needs to be taken within the next 18 months. And we have to bring about, we have to pull the micro a little closer to the macro. Mm. Because the, the economy is fantastic. Persons <laughs> abroad are saying, well, maybe they should come here and look at this economy and see our best. But then with all that, you realize that there are some people down there who <coughs> just believe that, listen, boss, if you don't come fix my road, give me some water. Those are important fix the things. things. It's important to those men yes. and women that are there. So. But are we talking about a trickle-down effect? No, well, listen, I don't know whether they want to trickle it down <laughs> or they want to bust up the pipe right now, but in the next mm -hmm. 18 months, yeah. something needs to happen. All right, well, I so, like to have a look at history. Yes. And history is repeating itself in some respect. In the period 1960s, the economy grew. And by that, we mean the gross domestic product, the output of all goods and services. That. The no, no, is, is the public, is the public well, no, I want the dollar, to understand. The dollar used to cross in a red China during yes, that Yes, I understand. But yeah. I know, is, is the public I want to understand what we mean by, by macroeconomic you know, numbers. 
So the total output of goods and services grew from year to year yeah. in the 1960s, largely on the backs of bauxite, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Tourism, mm -hmm. and yeah. at the time we had a fairly healthy manufacturing sector, but the two prime drivers, bauxite and, and tourism. tourism, okay, it grew. But what also grew was inequality. Inequality grew. So, so more money was being made. But remember, I said the money I make by just a few families and the big international bauxite companies, the Kaisers, mm -hmm. the Reynolds, yeah. and those companies, the Alcors. So the money now reached on ground level. So it never had enough nah, trickle down effect never, right it then. It stopped somewhere up there. Okay. So, so, so that's happened in the 60s. So though there was growth in GDP, macroeconomic numbers right, people were suffering. So the lived experiences you know what, were was still the different. Of course, you know what okay. was the campaign of the People's National Party in 1972? Tell them, Keith. Oh, me have a campaign. I don't <laughs> no, I'm not. You live <laughs> in the country. <laughs> tell them what was the campaign slogan in 1972, Keith. You live in the country. No, you tell Better them, Better must come. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Man. Yeah, man. Better Keith, must come. No. Yeah, man. Right. And why could they have a campaign slogan like that? It was really a juxtaposition of the hard yeah, times. Yeah. Though... The cake was getting bigger. So the 70s really was a kind of like pushback at that. But I, I want to ask a question to you, Mr. Clyde. We went through almost three years of COVID. Yes. yes. We are now faced with a war that is prolonged in Ukraine and Russia. When you say we? Um, which is affecting us every day. Yeah. yeah. In the macroeconomic business that you're talking about. Yeah, I, just, it yeah. is I, I just like to know what we know is the, when we the, talk. The, 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 the war in between Israel and, um, and Hamas, all of these things are a part of what <laughs> the Prime Minister had to be balancing out. Uh -huh. And there are people out there that are behaving that these variables don't exist. No, so, yeah. not here, though. Huh? Yes. Yeah. So but when don't they, overshoot when talk, them. When they talk about wheat yeah. coming into yeah. out of the country, when they talk about price increases, as I said, the Prime Minister has done a beautiful job with the economy in the bus. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so, so to his credit, yes, he has of been doing a beautiful job. A fantastic um, job. But, but, but I gave the example of but, the 1960s. But remember, so, so he juxtaposed that, that yes. to what's happening now. So yes. he's not saying, and, yes. and let the me not overassume what you're saying. So, so the I'm, the I'm saying never had COVID. he's not saying yeah. that... Um, things aren't getting better. Our things have not been um, progressing macro in the right direction. So, Macroeconomically yes. speaking, we have been getting better. Yeah. However, the trickle down is, is what's not there. Yes, so that yes. the man who is on the road, his lived you know, experience yes. is far different from what right. we're seeing. You know what to Just permit me, Keith, if you don't sure. mind. Go ahead. I find, an, an, I find analysis. I understand, you see, people are Jamaican partisans and, mm. and political. They're two partisans, so the analysis sometimes too one way. Mm. So I, I will say that there was a great job in the 1960s, macroeconomic indicators, but that and so forth and so on. What is significant for me mm -hmm. at the end of the day is how the lives of regular folk in their communities are mm. impacted whether a youth man get a good school to go to, whether the people can get a good public transportation, health services, and such the like. That ultimately must be the mark of one's leadership in the society. Ultimately, <laughs> the measure. And it's always interesting here, the analysis, because when, they when we do the analysis of the 70s, nobody wants to talk about the quadrupling of oil prices. Nobody wants to talk about that, you know, and its impact on the then government. Quadrupling, not just like double, quadrupling. Oil prices quadrupled in the world between 1975, 76 to, to 1978, 79. They quadrupled. Now, we know the impact on oil because every single productive enterprise in a country uses that. Of course. But when they talk about how the PMP devastated the economy in the 1970s and this and there was no growth. Nobody wants to talk about the quadrupling and the impact on your net international reserves when you used to pay a dollar for the thing, the same mm. thing, and you're now paying four dollars. You used to pay one dollar forty, yes. and now we're paying sixty-eight yes. dollars. So, so I'm just saying, I'm ah. just saying. Ah. So part of the analysis that, yeah. and probably because I'm a lawyer, we look at the evidence mm -hmm. on in all the circumstances. So the people have sent a message to wholeness and said, Bridgen. You, I hear you talking about macroeconomic numbers and GDP and fully unemployment mm. and so on. We hear all of that. But we just said to you, say, brother, don't you have dirty? It's dirty tough. Um, so, it's uh, dirty tough. I want to give you so, an, a little before you get on. Yeah, go on. Listen, and I bring this down to 
parenting. A lot of persons is not lacking of opportunities. They go to school. Yeah, go What on. they choose to do after they leave school and their mindset, and that's why we talk about this generation gap. How have we as parents passed on to our children the values that needed to be passed on? So when you look at how I have three boys and a daughter, hmm? what values did I set for them? Has any of my boys ever feel the need to drop his pants between below his waist? None of them have. As a father, I am there. I'm standing in there. If you teach your children that when you go to school, I might not have much, but I have sacrificed to give you an education. Take the education. When you get the education, what you must then do is put it into a good practice. You know what you the know? numbers are, Keith? Um, you know what the education numbers are in are Jamaica they? in terms of the performance in core subjects of mathematics and English, mm -hmm. you know, th those numbers are in the pits, right? Yeah, let me ask I'm just asking, are, are, Keith, you think, are you thinking so, it's only children's fault? No, I'm not no, blaming no. anybody. I'm <laughs> just no. saying so, so, that, yeah. No, what, what, what you're seemingly saying yeah. is that uh, there's a duty for parents and there's a duty on the individual, yes. but, but the product that you're getting is not at the standard that it should be it's at bad. as well. It's bad. Yes. It's and, and, and what both of you seem to be saying, you know, is that local government needs to be able to do more. I'm, That's going, the, I'm going to upset Clyde and a couple of people now. No, no. All right, when, when the government gave the biggest increase in the history, the teachers could even calculate their own salary. Some of them. <sighs> yeah. But that's all right. They, they couldn't but, even but, calculate that salary. But remember now, you know, that, that increase that you speak of, no, that increase that you speak about oh, is in the Jesus. context, is in the context of all those other things that have been happening uh, as well. Listen, uh, I'm a teacher uh, at the university. Uh, let me uh, tell you. Honestly, honestly, brother, mm -hmm. if we begin to choose to fix the country by fixing parenting. Oh, you did that. A, no, we have to. But is that the government's no. job? No. no. And, 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 and why get, it another get, thing that people think that, you know, sky, man. Um, the government is to set policies. Yeah. yeah. Don't get we, in the sky. as parents, have to guide our children in a proper way. Uh, if, my, if my son. Context is important. Well, hang on, Keith. Well, hang on. Yeah, we'll program is so finished. Context, home context with a is pencil in. That but, didn't belong to him. But, I am carrying him back to school. But no, with context, but no. This, hang on. I just want to put some context. Context is important. This is a society that has just come out of slavery and colonialism. Families. Oh, Jesus, we're coming out of slavery a good while now. Please, man. please. We need to stop beating please, that please. now. I'm not saying please. that. No, no, so no. no effects, I didn't interrupt you. The effects are gone. All I'm saying, no. no, okay. no, no all I'm simply no. saying, all I'm simply saying by that point is that we do not have a family structure as you would want us to have because at that time, families were not the thing. So we don't have that family structure. So I like to do what the facts are on the ground. Mm. Jamaica has, I would say, about four or five different kind of social groupings in relation to family structures. You have families like Keith, that they give all. Yeah. And when the children come from school, it's organized. And they have to do some school work. But then you have families that were born of girls who were 14 and 15 by big men who impregnated mm -hmm. them. So there are no family, those children don't have any family like Keith speaks about. Then you yeah. have the rural family. Then you have the uptown family. You have the Chinese family, the Jewish family, mm -hmm. the white Jamaican families. I'm just saying to you, so when we speak it's about family in Jamaica, that's right, when it's we speak broad. about family in Jamaica, it's not one cap size that fits all. So, so it's a little bit more yeah. complex. So obviously we need to have you guys here again nah, for us to have a more uh, robust what, what, discussion. What, what, one thing I tell him, you know, no, what, if him lose what, one more court what, case, me and the garbage. Wait, well, can I tell so, you this? I'm so, happy to report. <laughs> that you have, so, I don't know what I'm So, so what, what, I want, what I want to get from, from yes, both of you. So yeah. when we look at the disposition of both, um, both party leaders, we saw where, where Mark Golden, he was premature in, in his statements yes. um, and his pronouncement or declaration. Yes. While the prime minister was a little bit more nuanced, youthful a little exuberant. bit more yes. conservative. Youthful I want to go first this time and so, then leave Keith the so last sure. word. What should we make of, of, I, of I'm both gonna addresses? You know, in, in, first is that I thought that Mark had overstated the case, right? Ah. Yes, I mean, in terms of the, the, the victory. But a lot depends on, 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 on what he's defining as his, vic as his victory, because he's not somebody who is unlearned, right? This is what he's defining as his, as his victory. One, they now have the majority in divisions. They were, they had about like 90 or yeah, 98. No, yes, 98. 90, and JLP had 130 on. Mm -hmm. 
and they have swung that around. Mm -hmm. So, in, so insofar as the winning of divisions, mm -hmm. that's a victory. Mm -hmm. so, so hang on. Okay. They so, also now have crawled back some municipal corporations. Mm -hmm. And they maintain Portmore Council. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, they're going to see that as victory. And finally, in terms of victory, the popular numbers, oh electoral numbers. So when you break it out on division by division basis, they're saying we could have to win this election. Mm -hmm. this so, election. Hang on, hang on. Uh, so, so they're going to see. So the, the one loss, the one loss and the great victory for the jail, because it is a local government election, yeah. the one loss would be seven corporations to the JLP, and six corporations to the yeah. People's National PNP. Party, plus Portmore Municipal Council that they want to turn so, into a so, parish. So, so, um, so, so well, I want you to hold on for a second now. So you are saying that um, Mark's, Mark's vision or definition of victory is yes. based on his own, his own indices vis-a-vis no, 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 no. Vis -vis no, what no, the EOJ has said. No, no, I'm no, asking. No, no, but those, that data is the EOJ data. He's mm. not setting up these indices. That's the EOJ data. The EOJ, because we have to establish some sort of criteria. So I'm saying, I don't think Mark Golin and the PMP is contesting that the Jamaica Labour Party if, if the numbers hold as they are but, now. Hang on. They have but, seven corporations. No, I don't think they're contesting no, but, but, that. But he has seen that he clearly is not the winner right but there. No, so I'm saying, for but, him to make that pronouncement. No, what I'm saying to you, I don't mm -hmm. think that is an issue. We shouldn't even discuss that point. That's not an issue. I've just enumerated. <laughs> I've just enumerated. No, hang on, hang on. But that's I, misleading, I, though. No, that's not misleading because I've, I've already said to you when they mm -hmm. speak about their victory, they tell you what they're talking about. Hang on. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know would wish me to... To kind of, I'm saying no, when the PMP you know. speak about their victory in the local government, yeah. they tell you, one, yeah. we have moved from the minority position in divisions to yeah. something. We see that as yeah. a plus. Because plus. can't be a loss there. All right. Yeah. Secondly, yeah. we have the majority of the right. popular vote. So, yeah. so we're that running out of time now. Hang on. We're running out of time. Anyway, give so, me a second. I'll wrap up. So we're running out of time. Oh, yes, I did say. Yeah, man, let me put my perspective on this. My goal is. Congratulations, sir. You did well. You did well. Because a lot of persons, even your own party, didn't even believe that you would have been able to That's propaganda. Off. No, that's propaganda. You're not there. Right? You're not but in no, the party man, to say that. No. No. So, so you are assuming but, but, no, what I no, but, but let me tell you something. Propaganda. Mm -hmm. A win is a win. Whether it's a ugly win <laughs> or a pretty win. And the Jamaica Labour Party has won the elections. Yes. Now, Seven, to six. put that in perspective, yes. I would advise the Labour Party to just decide now to put some work into what I call the macro part of this thing. The micro. The, the micro. Because yes, yes, no. we don't want to have a ugly win a year and a half time. We really want to have another beautiful win. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you cannot <laughs> take it away from Matt Goldie that he has not won anything. I mean, he was very much, you know, I don't want to be mischievous, you know, to say that he was super charged up for about four hours. Well, I can imagine. And then somebody that goes to Puma and say, no, boss, let's understand this. We don't win, you know, we just win some seats. Oh, you but, mean just so. <laughs> hang on, can I, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Remember now, remember <laughs> it's coming from 90 compared to 130. No, but not wrong with that. No, I'm just saying. I'll give you 20 I'm, seconds yes, now, because we're about to wrap up. All I'm saying is that we must be fair. <laughs> He must be elated. Mm -hmm. This is his first election. Yes, this is his first election. And of the indices that we measure, he's come out on he four has done of them. Well. Yeah. So we have to we have to just set aside everything and say and un understand his elation. As I said, he overstated the case in terms of saying victory, victory without at the same time qualifying. But I'm mm -hmm. saying to you, subsequently they have set out what they mean by Victory. All right, mm -hmm. 20 seconds, Mr. Hines. No, man, Jamaica uh, Labour Party, do you think that they'll be calling an election No, or <laughs> next year will they ride up well, five years? That is above my pay scale, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but what I would say, before we even contemplate calling an election, uh -huh. there are some issues that we need to fix. Yeah. It is people that win elections, eh? All right. Votes. Thank you very much. <laughs> 20 seconds. Daniel, what do you think? I wish I could quote the Daniel scripture. You know when they, the writing was on the wall and Nebuchadnezzar sent yeah. for Daniel, for Daniel to read it. Take it, take it. You know I've been Me reading listen. the balances I've, and, and I've found, well, you can yeah, complete you the rest of it. No, man. <laughs> so, in that regard, so, mm, that regard, yeah. he's the fourth man in the fire. Come the on. fourth man in the fire. <laughs> Found wanting, having been weighed. Yeah. All right. So Andrew is glad that the people haven't shown him the exit yet. Uh, but they may just...
show him the exit soon. Uh, Fourth man in the fire. <laughs> yes, sir. So the Lord was with him. And, and, the Lord and, was with and, him. And him out. Hallelujah. And by the time we turn around in the 18 months, I promise him, Clive, Clive is my neighbor, you know, so Clive is my neighbor. So I'll fix him up, get a nice little green shirt for him, and we'll yes. him out. Well, all right. well, and I'm happy all right. with it. That's it. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, and there you have it. That has been the conversation. Yeah. Riveting discussion. We continue to ask that you like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until such time, have yourselves a good one. I'm Kwame Thomas. Good day.